Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time! Today's movie recap will be a war, crime, and action movie from 2014 called Camp X-Ray. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie starts with a man arriving at his home as news of the 9-11 attacks plays on his TV. He arranges several cell phones on a table before heading to a room to pray. Suddenly, someone bags his head and drags him to a detention camp. Eight years later, a line of soldiers marches past cells with prisoners shouting from inside. The soldiers are briefed in a room and given a tour. Officer Ransdell then asks for volunteers to restrain a disruptive detainee. One of the new soldiers, Cole, steps forward and tries to hold the detainee's arm, but he elbows her. She steps back and the others manage to overpower the prisoner. They strap him down, remove him from the cell, and he spits on Cole, who retaliates with a kick. The prisoner is then put in a wheelchair and locked back in his cell. The incident is a hot topic on the bus later. Ransdell tries to flirt with Cole, but she rejects him. That night, she had a video call with her mom. The next day, she is tasked with distributing books to the detainees. She asks one prisoner if he wants a book, but he becomes aggressive. Ransdell steps in and calms him down, but the prisoner insists that Ransdell personally hand him the book, claiming that prisoners just don't like women. Cole then wheels her book cart to cell 105, where a prisoner complains about not getting the last Harry Potter book after two years of asking. She gets irritated and tells him to choose from the available books. He asks for the Azkaban book, and when Cole asks if it's an Arab book, he laughs, explaining it's part of the Harry Potter series. Later, Cole goes for a run by the bay before starting her new shift. While doing her rounds, the prisoner in cell 105 tries to chat with her, but she ignores him. He calls her Blondie and asks for her name, but she doesn't respond. He introduces himself as Ali and keeps talking, but she tells him to stop. Meanwhile, other prisoners wrap their Korans in white sheets. Ali requests water and promises to stop talking if she gives him some. When Cole opens the slot in his cell to pass him a bottle, Ali throws a cup filled with feces at her. Other soldiers rush to help and call in a separate unit to restrain Ali. Later, the soldiers are fishing on a yacht and Ransdell continues flirting with Cole. They have a party that night and Cole drinks too much and starts getting drunk. She heads to the bathroom and discovers some adult magazines. Ransdell follows her and she teases him with the magazines. They start making out but when Ransdell doesn't stop after she tells him to, she pushes him away. Meanwhile, Ali is being moved to different cells every two hours as a form of punishment. Cole notices that his cell is being searched and picks up a cup with a neat design drawn by Ali. Another soldier takes it and bags it as evidence. Cole leaves and sees Ali, exhausted, being dragged back to his cell by two guards. Later, Cole sneaks into the files to find Ali's records. She sees photos of him unconscious and injured, with one picture showing a pair of hands holding his face up. She checks his file and learns about his previous offenses. She also notices the Alfred Hitchcock code and asks another soldier what it means. He explains that it signifies a psychiatrist visit and she thanks him. During lunch, another soldier, Cruz, sits with Cole. She asks if he has read Harry Potter. He dismisses the idea but asks why she's asking. She brushes off the question. During her rounds, Cole notices Ali working on a Sudoku puzzle. He stands by the glass and asks her if she knows how to play Sudoku. He mentions that he solved all the available puzzles and had to create his own. He starts chatting about Sudoku and university but becomes upset when Cole refuses his offer to share the puzzles because it's against the rules. He sarcastically claims the puzzles contain a secret message and flushes them down the toilet. He calls the soldiers the real terrorists, causing Cole to angrily tell him to be quiet. Cole tells Ali that the Harry Potter book he wants isn't in the library despite what another guard said. Ali apologizes for his persistence and admits that not knowing how things will end is driving him mad. While the prisoners pray in the cafeteria, the soldiers hold a flag-raising ceremony. Eight months later, Cole tries to convince the prisoners to eat after five days on a hunger strike. They refuse her offer and she reminds them of what will happen next. One prisoner is removed from his cell, strapped down and given an IV drip. A high-ranking officer asks the soldiers if they know why the prisoners are refusing to eat. Cole mentions that she heard the prisoner wanted an elliptical machine. The officer goes to the block to talk to the prisoner and their request is granted. Cole watches Ali as he kicks a ball inside a cage. She asks if he plans to use the elliptical machine and he replies that none of the prisoners will. He tells her to ask Mahmoud, the prisoner who requested it. Ali adds that he only managed 12 kicks that day, while the prisoner in another block supposedly did 40, 
but only the guards can see into other blocks. He suspects the other prisoner lied. Cole promises to vouch for him if he can beat the 40 kick record. He tries again but only reaches 8 kicks before jokingly claiming he did 48. Cole tells Ali that obedient prisoners can play soccer with others on a field if they comply with the rules. Ali acknowledges this but refuses to comply. He calms down, remarking that Cole must think he's foolish. She assures him he's smart enough to attend university. They laugh together until Mahmoud walks by and angrily yells at Ali. Ransdell then calls Cole over and asks what she and Ali are talking about. When she says it's nothing, Ransdell insists that if that's the case, they shouldn't be talking at all. Ali calls out to Cole, claiming he managed 20 kicks, which makes her chuckle. Ransdell asks Cole to help supervise the showers since the other guards are busy. He orders Ali to strip down and shower, and though Ali hesitates because Cole is there, Ransdell threatens to send a rapid response team if he doesn't comply. Ali eventually showers while Ransdell makes sure Cole is watching, violating their SOP and the Koran. Later that night, the other soldiers find Cole drinking. She tries to sympathize with a guard who was supposed to help Ransdell supervise the showers, but the guard is confused, saying the block was peaceful that day. Cole realizes Ransdell lied and files a report against him. She is then summoned to their superior's office. A high-ranking officer sides with Ransdell and dismisses Cole's report, saying she was too friendly with Ali. She's told there will be a hearing soon and is dismissed. In the mess hall, she sits with Cruz, who asks if her food is good and mentions that someone tried to hang themselves the previous night. Cole is confused since detainees are closely guarded, but Cruz clarifies it wasn't a detainee, it was a guard who survived. When Cole expresses guilt, Cruz tells her she's being manipulated by the prisoners and leaves as Ransdell passes by to taunt her. Cole continues her guard duties but grows more sensitive to the detainee's conditions while becoming increasingly isolated from other soldiers. While cleaning a cell, she learns she's being moved to the night shift. Ali looks at the clock outside his cell and realizes Cole isn't there. He asks if the clock is correct and the guard confirms the time. He then asks where Cole is but gets no answer. On the night shift, Cole passes Ali's cell and sees he's asleep. As she walks away, Ali calls out and gets up. Cole tells him to go back to sleep but he says he never sleeps well anyway. He tries to ask why she's there but stops, knowing she can't tell him. Cole reveals she snitched on someone, which Ali misunderstands as a Harry Potter reference. When she explains what it means, Ali realizes she reported Ransdell, even though she won't admit it directly. Ali asks why she joined the base, but she turns the question around. Ali insists he was never part of a terrorist group, and they start talking about their hometowns. Ali says he's from Germany, while Cole simply mentions she's from a small town. Another soldier gives Cole a cup of coffee and tells her she won't be on the night shift long. Ali asks what date it is, and Cole says it's July 14th. He realizes Cole will leave next month since the guards change in August and asks if she'll try to return. She says no but adds that she's learned a lot and that new guards will learn too. Ali asks her what she's learned and reminds her they're supposed to be enemies. He takes a hidden blade from his Koran, kneels, and holds it to his throat. He threatens to use it if Cole calls for help. She tries to calm him down but Ali says he's tired of being imprisoned and barely living. Cole tells him her name is Amy and that she's from Moorhaven, Florida. She asks if there's a zoo in Bremen, which surprises him. She explains that as a child, she visited the zoo to see something beyond her small town. Seeing animals locked in small cages made her uncomfortable and she believed they should be free. Ali scoffs, thinking she means the zookeepers have no choice, but Cole disagrees. She circles the block before nervously checking on Ali again. He's still holding the blade but is crying. He eventually drops the knife and gives it to her. They hold hands and cry together. Later, Cole packs her things and leaves the camp. Ali lies on his bed until a new soldier arrives to distribute books. Ali taunts him but notices something on the cart, the last Harry Potter book. He opens it to find a note from Cole on the cover page. The movie ends with Cole leaving the camp and Ali sitting on his bed, finally reading the book he's waited years to receive. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.